Hello, beautiful people, and welcome to another segment of Complete Wellness with Cindy, the Busy Woman's Cheerleader. This is the channel where women from all walks of life can stop by, get tools and resources to help them thrive 360 in mind, body, spirit, and finances. I invite you to stay connected, subscribe to this channel, and visit me online at thecindyrand.com. Now for today's segment. Hello, hello, beautiful people. This is Cindy, the Busy Woman's Cheerleader. Hopefully everybody can hear me. Hope everybody's doing okay. Had a little technical difficulty, so I still wanted to jump on here um, tonight with our Mind Your Business Minutes extended version. Um, this is the free um, coaching portal that I do um, for the group versus the Thrive 360 group, which is a paid group. So I just like to share a few little tidbits with our Busy Woman's Network and appreciation to you all for connecting to try to give you all some tips. Those of you who are aspiring business owners, I think that's what we've kind of been working towards, um, giving you some information. And then later on, of course, we'll move forward with uh, scaling and growing different businesses and entities. But for the time being, we are here and I am happy, super excited as usual. Okay. So um, let's do a little housekeeping. Our power quote of today is, knowing yourself is the beginning of all wisdom. And that comes from Aeropostale. So I am going to work on, let's see here. I need to uh, share my screen because we're going to get back into processes. Um, hopefully this is, let's see here. Let me double check because sometimes I start clicking on stuff and they're telling me I'm clicking on the wrong thing. So I'm going to share my screen. And we're going to share this one. And what is that over there? Okay. I'm going to share this screen here. And let's make sure I've got that there. Get this zoom down. Zoom, zoom, zoom. Get it down. All right. Okay, so I'm um, going to go over some processes today. So hopefully you all can see that. Let me double check. Can you see it on the, um, the screen what I've got? Okay, all right. So we're going to go over processes today, part two, because I think the last time, and hopefully this is the right group, but <laughs> we have been going over with my uh, paid group. We have been going over a lot of um, the pro processes as far as starting the actual business, um, basically getting organized to get started, to move um, side hustles to actual businesses, bona fide businesses. And I think if I'm not mistaken, um, last week, I went over information regarding legitimizing the business. I don't think I got into any of the finances part, um, financing or finances parts of that. But um, with part two, I wanted to go back into the, the processes. And so hopefully you can see my screen up. Otherwise, I'm going to read it. Well, kind of piggyback and read it. Um, basically, you know, many entrepreneurs make the mistake of creating a product or service that they want, only to discover later on that no one wants it or is willing to pay for it. Okay, so that is the reason why you have to have processes in place early on. You have to have those processes in place because in those processes, you're creating a lot of different segments, goals, um, actionable items, for lack of better terms. Well, I think that's pretty good. Actionable items. And it's basically kind of giving you like a blueprint so you'll know what to do going forward to be able to grow and scale your business and actually you know, get it from um, stage A to stage B to stage C. So one of the best tips, it, it, this is bringing me um, to the thought of an instance where I was I was a panelist, one of the panelists for the NBA Association. They had a, a finance summit, and I was one of the, the panelists. And I remember distinctly, you know, you've got all these people. Some of them have done quite well in their careers and in their lives. And um, for the most part, everybody's asking me, well, you know, what, what do you suggest that I invest in? You know, what is something that I can invest in? Or, you know, which company or which hedge fund or, you know, yada, yada, yada got all these different things. And so, I, and, and then they went down this long list of, 
you know, all the, the scams that were out there, all the people who abused their power as far as actually deliverables when it comes down to investing. And so the biggest hot topic of the day or that evening um, was asking what should they invest in? What would be the advisable uh, best recourse for them to actually invest into a business? And I tell everybody the same thing, invest in yourself. And I say that because you're not going to lie to yourself. You're not going to cheat yourself. I hope you're not going to lie to yourself, but you're not going to lie to yourself. You're not going to cheat yourself. You're not going to abuse yourself. You are going to work, work, work to make sure that your goals are met, work, work, work to make sure that your company is in the green and not the red. Um, you're going to be good to yourself because you've invested in yourself and you definitely want to make sure that whatever it is that you set your hands to, um, as the good book says, you know, set your hand to the plow, whatever you set your hands to, that you prosper and succeed in that. And so that's one of the, you know, the hot tips that I give people a lot of times, you know, invest in yourself and then by all means, you know, create your business um, from something that you do. That was the second question. What type of business? What should, you know, should I do a franchise? I spoke to someone earlier. Um, she basically um, has a franchise business where she helps people to find a franchise that's appropriate for them. Now, me, on the other hand, I do things a little different. I've got ways, you know, through my background in accounting, I've helped people with the ways that I know of for them to, uh, th those that have um, the upper echelon that have, you know, thousands of dollars to burn, millions of dollars to burn. And then I've dealt with those people that had a lot of grit and passion, but didn't have a lot of capital. And so both ends of the spectrum, they all ended up with businesses. And I'm very thankful for that. But um, I always tell people as well, when they ask, what type of business do you suggest? Uh, basically, again, investing in yourself. What are your hobbies? What do you like to do? What's important to you? The thing that I've learned about taking a hobby and turning it into a business is that you're not going to lose your passion. You are going to run like a mat truck and a bug. You're going to run. You're going to run. You will not lose your passion because this is something you enjoy doing. So when you turn your business, turn a business, a hobby into a business, you're going to keep that passion. You're going to constantly look for ways to be able to monetize and to grow it and to make it bigger and bigger and, and greater and greater impacts. Now, um, moving right along, um, one of the foundational things that I like to use when I, I explain to people about the different processes is... Um, the, and you probably can see that the Viper Foundation method is like a, a goal achievement method. Some may have heard of it, some may not. But basically with that, you've got a five-step module and it's Viper, V-I-P-E-R. And the V is for visualize. So you definitely want to truly visualize your goal, your end goal, what you would like to do. And then you want to implement it. So you want to have these processes to implement different stages, different techniques to make you succeed in that goal. And then you have your planning process, which is still what we're talking about, you know, with these process uh, lives that I'm doing. Um, you have your planning process to distinguish factors based on these techniques that you have created. And then you have the execution when you actually move forward in that plan and put it into motion. These are no longer little check marks. These are actionable items that you are executing. And then, of course, you have the revamp. Well, I like to say revamp, but it's actually like a recap, same thing. But you have that as well, because then um, that's why I always say use the power of pen to pencil, pen to paper, I'm tired. Uh, the power of pen to paper, because when you write down these goals, and again, that's biblical as well, science talks about it, but it is biblical. When you write down your vision, write down your goal, make it clear. Um, not just for yourself, but for anyone who may be interested in um, investing in you, large or small. So uh, basically, that's what this process, part one and part two, is about, is getting the Viper model set up where you're covering everything. There is no cookie cutter. That's the thing. A lot of times I, I have people ask me, well, you know, is there just like this one step method? No. I normally implement the Viper model when I'm explaining to aspiring entrepreneurs how to move forward from a side hustle to a bona fide business. I use the Viper model at this stage because there is no cookie cutter. However, this model works for any type of business.
any type of business, whether you're starting something new, whether you've got something in the back of your head, you'd like to, you know, basically want to get started and see how that works. This works for that as well. So again, we've got the Viper, which is the visualize, implement, planning, execution, and recap. All right. So um, the good thing about the Viper model is that it leaves no stone unturned. It's just in a nutshell, a way, a simplified way for people to remember, you know, the different steps and phases in their process. The process is very important because the process is basically your goals. This is where you're writing your goals. You're not writing a business plan. You're writing your goals. That's why I do a lot of journals. I have a lot of journals. And as a matter of fact, um, I'll show you all my most recent journal set that I put out. And I think Amazon has it now. Yeah, Amazon finally has it out. But um, just a different way. People use old-fashioned notebooks because I use that. And then they use journals. And I always try to suggest people use journals because then you're not susceptible to taking your grocery list or the, you know, the kids to do list and adding it to that. You've got a designated place for it. And so um, basically, again, I'm flipping, I'm showing you my notes here. <laughs> I'm not gonna, I've, I've basically talked about all of that, but we're going to go through, um, like I said, we've talked about the Viper method, but we're going to go through three things, basically highlighting for tonight. And that is your vendor list. <laughs> Excuse me, but then your processes, you need to create a vendor list. So especially if you are starting a service or creating a product, I always suggest people have a high and a low vendor list. And the reason why I say a high and a low, now listen, true story. My first business was done 1999 and um, it was a, a dollar store. Well, actually a dollar and something store. And so I was so fortunate and so blessed during that time to have a combination of different vendors that I would patronize in order to keep my shelves full. All right. So listen to this. When this is the importance of having a high and a low list. Sometimes let's just be for real, for real. Your money will be funny. It's not going to be, um, you're not going to have as much to work with as other times. Sometimes vendors have a $5,000 minimum. Sometimes they will have a $250 or $1,000 or 1500 minimum. Some companies have no minimums. However, it's important when you're creating your processes to go on while you're taking that time to create the process, go on and start to create your vendor list for whatever it is that you're working on. Create your vendor list. So in creating your vendor list, you're going to uh, make a list of those who have all of your products, everything that you need from A to Z. Try to buy things in bulk. These days, when you Google wholesale, all types of junk comes up. But um, I do, and my team as well, We a lot of times, because I deal with so many different industries and niches, um, niches actually, um, we've got like a combination or a network of people that we can send, especially like with the exporting. Now, listen, I'm, I've got a, a associate of mine, actually one of my, my clients that um, does exporting and I've talked to her already. So when she gets back in the States, um, I'm definitely going to try to get her on on one of these Wednesdays to talk about exporting because in all honesty, yes, it is good to buy in the USA. But, you know, again, let's just be for real, for real about it. Sometimes you do have to get things imported and um, the cost is better, but then you have to keep in mind customs and, and all this other stuff, yada, yada, yada. Now, when I mentioned about the low list, sometimes you don't need 10,000 of one item. You need five, you need a dozen, you need three dozen. Now, I would always encourage everybody to purchase in bulk because it is cheaper. You don't want to buy your products for one project. You want to think ahead. The same thing I tell people when they're naming their businesses. Do not name your business for where you are. Name your business for where you're going. So if you are the Shoe Shop LLC, you might want to say Shoe Shop International LLC because you want to think big. Don't limit yourself 
thinking about what's around the corner and who's next door that you want to sell to. You always want to think, especially in this day and time, think about the masses, think about the universe, think about all of these people that are willing to buy your product or service should you package and present it correctly all over the world. So don't limit yourself, even with your name. Do not limit yourself. Think big, think big, think big, big, big. Now, another thing, the second thing that I wanted to go over as far as um, your processes, make sure that you know or make your list um, with which portals you want, which platforms you want to use, which ones you want to grace with your business. Even if you have a brick and mortar business, you still need to have that online program presence. So that would be important as well is to figure out which portals you want to use. Some people may want to use Facebook in lieu of um, Instagram or vice versa. I would, I would suggest as many marketers do um, go all over the place. Again, don't limit yourself to one place versus the other. Go all over the place. Now, um, some of the portals that you may you know, want to consider and you want to research um, Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, YouTube, do a podcast, a blog, and the list goes on and on. And again, as time passes in this group, I am going to break down each of these and how you can monetize on them and how you can get your business or your venture or your side hustle that you're turning into a legitimate business, get it on there productively where you're not only monetizing from the actual host, but you're also monetizing with your business. Now, I will say this, and this is just being in all honest, just, just being honest with you. These things do take time. They are processes that have to grow on you. They are, are growing processes. Um, there are different facets to it. And some of you who are familiar with it, if you're catching on the replay, you know that sometimes it's not as quick and I don't sell dreams. You know, it's not as quick as, oh, I'm getting on there and I'm going to make $10,000 this month. Now you can you know, I have that great big gorilla faith too. So I believe that you can, but you definitely have to do your homework. Like my mother always says, do your homework, do your homework. That means research it. Make sure that you are taking in information in the proper format and dosages so that you can prosper in those areas and triumph in those areas, not just get there and get frustrated. Now, another thing that I like to stress a lot, and I may just do it this way so that you can see it all in one place. One thing that I like to stress a lot as well um, is content, content, content. When you get these platforms up here, you definitely want to make sure that you have a content calendar, content journal, content calendar. And I will tell you now, the phone is not enough. It's not enough. You need to plan, schedule, implement, execute, fiber all of that, even with those processes. Now, some of the scheduling portals, and I'm, I'm not preferable. I, I think I probably use all of these. Um, some of the, just an example, uh, Hootsuite, Lumi, Sprout Social, Buffer, Hearsay, those are just a few. The list goes on and on and on. But those are a few of the scheduling portals that you can use to create your information and schedule it to put it it out on these platforms. Okay? okay. All right. So basically in order for you to build a profitable brand, you have to have these processes in place. You have to have a system in place so that you can thrive, so that you can be organized. And I will definitely, definitely say um, getting organized in the beginning will save you a lot of heartache later because you are just going through and checking off your accomplished goals. That's what you're doing from that point on. Now, I did say that I was going to show you all my new journal. I'm so happy about my new journals being out. Let's find it. Let me see. Let me find it. I think this is it here. <laughs> There it is. This needs to come off my screen. What did I do with it? I just had it. Well, that's the budget planner. Well, I'll let you all flip through and see. I wanted you to see the whole set together. I think this is it. Is this the whole set together? Yeah, I think this is the whole set together. Can you see it? Yeah, that's the whole set together. Now, um, Amazon, of, of course. Um, so I've got the woman unveiled. That's what it's called, woman unveiled. 
Thrive 360 is the journal, which is a 60 day, um, a grateful mind journal, 60 days to a grateful mind, like a gratitude journal. And then we've got the budget planner because, you know, I'm all into you making sure you've got your coins correct. And then you've got the um, journal notebook. So it's a three set. I think they've got it in there separate, but just know that there are three that you can get as a set. Basically grab all three of them um, for under $35. And probably it may be a little cheaper for some, depending on your account as well. But let me give you a little sneak peek inside. Um, this is the budget planner. Let me find the Woman Unveiled Journal. So that's the cover. This is the inside with the introduction. There's the 60 days to gratitude. I've got thought provokers. I've got daily sheets and open sheets for you to be able to make your notes and uh, write your visions clear. Then you've got quotes on the pages as well. And so this is for 60 days, but it also has a lot of um, blank uh, pages. I'm flipping through fast, but um, no, all the pages are lined. But it also has like um, blank pages that you can, you know, fill in like the thought provokers and then have your open page here uh, with a daily quote. And then you can write out, you know, freely here. And so that goes on and on. So now let me find this here. Okay, so the budget planner I am super excited about because, you know, my accounting background, I always tell people you got to have somewhere where you organize your funds. All right. So the Woman Unveiled budget planner is here. Let's see. Right there belongs to, it tells you how to use it. You've got your financial goals, your wish list. Then you write your bank account information in there, your credit card information, um, the subscription information, retirement information, investment trackers, donation trackers, and then cheers to your financial health and wealth. And so uh, January, which it doesn't have like a year, so you can just use it whenever you grab it now. You can just start with February. But this January, it has a budget. Actually, go back and just do the January budget so that you can have it graduated. Because this is for an entire year. The budget planner um, is an entire year. So just, you know, go back retroactive, do January. And then it's the same thing. You've got your budget sheets. Your spending, your expenses, um, income tracker, and then there's reflection here. Let's go back over there. There's reflection page for you to recap. Just like I said earlier about the Viper, you always want to recap. And so then the same thing starts again uh, for February. You have that same information. Um, the budget tracker, you've got a calendar. Um, you always want to set your intentions when you're doing something. I think that's very important. A lot of times people really underestimate um, the power of setting intentions and, and basically setting intentions is like setting your goals. You're setting your goals. When I say create processes, I'm saying set your intentions, create your process, get organized, organize your chaos, all of that stuff. Um, I think that is all for today. Hopefully that it helps somebody. Um, of course, if you have any questions or if you need any help, me and my team, my team and I, however you want to put it, um, always definitely here to help. Um, like I said, we have, this is what I, I do at no charge as a courtesy to you all because I want to add value and, and really let you know that I appreciate you connecting. Um, we do have membership levels in the group. Um, where I would help you with this one-on-one -on -one and then basically give you like a, a blueprint and a roadmap um, specifically for your business or specifically for your venture, you know, whatever it is that you're doing. So it wouldn't be so broad-based. It would be individualized. And um, we'd have a chance to chit-chat and talk and really get you going. So I uh, definitely go to, I think it is still up. It should be. Um, on our Busy Women's Network site. I think it's still up. Um, so let me stop this screen share, I guess. Yeah, so it's still up. And um, what you do is go and just take a look at that. Look at the, the premium and the platinum. It's just $8.88. And you're definitely going to get more. That's like a seed, you know, a seed into your success. You're definitely going to get more from me Um value-wise than $8.88. We just wanted to try to make it reasonable um, for the Busy Women's Network if you need additional help in catapulting your business to scale it or to get started, 
any of the above. Um, just wanted to make sure you had that. So that is all for now. Um, I always like to give that offer. If any of you um, listening now on the replay decide that um, you want to um, get the three journal set, just let me know that you received it, you, you purchased it. Just do a selfie and put it up inside of our, our group or uh, tag the Busy Woman Cheerleader. And I'll definitely, I have some uh, a free gift for you for that in appreciation for you uh, grabbing one or all three um, from the journal set that's out, the Woman Unveiled journal set. So that is all for now. Peace, joy, blessings be multiplied to you. And I will see you next time. Thank you again for tuning in to Complete Wellness with Cindy, the Busy Woman's Cheerleader. Follow me on social media at Busy Woman's Cheerleader. <laughs> Remember, together we write our stories, share our journeys, create memories, and leave our marks in history. Until next time, peace, blessings, and joy be multiplied to you. Ta-ta.